It is my honor and privilege to introduce our guest speaker for this evening. He was chosen by the class of 2018, and I think it says how awesome Dearborn Public Schools are that students actually chose a Dearborn High graduate to speak at Etzel Ford's graduation. That's them. Our keynote speaker, Demetrius Harmon, is an all-around artist. His love for art has drawn him into various career paths, including, but not limited to, screenwriting, poetry, acting, and entrepreneurship. He started his clothing, clothing brand at age 12 and even placed first place in Dearborn's Young Entrepreneur Academy in 10th grade. Demetrius's talents have gained him over a million followers combined throughout his social media. He uses extensive reach to spread awareness for mental health through various mediums such as his short film, Be Happy, or documentary, You Matter. He's currently working on a poetry book as well as maintaining his clothing brand. He hopes to change the world with his art and words. And right now, he progresses towards that goal. Please help me welcome Mr. Demetrius Harmon. Wow, this is crazy. Um, I don't have any gift cards to give you guys, so I hope my words are enough. Um, before I start my speech, I just want to get a few things off my chest, and I hope you guys stick with me through that. Um, first, I was told I had to wear a gown, but I spent my hard-earned money on this suit, so. <laughs> um, I read my speech for my second mother, um, Mrs. Shahidi, and she told me, you know, you don't have to just read the speech, you know, put your personality into it. So I suppose me doing that just now is me putting my personality into it. Um, I only ask for a few things from you guys, um, that you listen with an open heart and open ears, that I need, I, I, I need a moment of silence. Um, and I need you guys to close your eyes starting now. And don't open your eyes until I say the word childhood. Everyone, please. Um, I want a moment of silence for my godmother, Dee Dee. She was murdered in fifth grade, when I was in fifth grade. Um, I want a moment of silence for my, god, my grandfather, Larry. He passed away when I was in seventh grade. I want a moment of silence for my great-grandmother when she passed away. A moment of silence for my Aunt Sarah. A moment of silence for my cousin Chico, who committed suicide. A moment of silence for my Uncle Reggie, who passed away this year. <sighs> a dentist arrives home. At, a dentist arrives home from work after a long day. They're at the peak of their career, making six figures. They begin to clean their home, and as they're cleaning their home, they stumble upon their childhood journal. Inside that journal holds vivid drawings with deep blues and loving reds, vibrant yellows. They break down in tears as they clinched that journal that they once held so dear to their heart. They realized that they gave up on, the dreams, on their dreams for the dreams of their parents, for the chase of greed, believing that these material things equate to happiness. This is not a future I want for any of you, and your life is yours to live. It's just begun as we close the first chapter, childhood. Since you can remember, you've been working for this moment, countless late nights, early moments for this. And as you all sit here, I hope you're as proud of yourselves as I am of you. Actually, give yourselves a round of applause, please. I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. <laughs> Joy Road and Burt, to be exact. And you know, if you, when you think about the type of place and neighborhood I was born in, there's so much darkness and it's hard to believe that there's any light in the world. But I never let that change my heart. Now look at me, I'm giving a, a graduation speech. And as I, as I say these things, it's still ridiculous. We can do anything we set our mind to with faith and rigorous work. Which makes me think about how I almost didn't graduate high school. Um, 12th grade year, I was failing Algebra 2. My entire family can attest to this. It just didn't make sense to me. We had to 
solve for these imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers, how do I find an imaginary number? And to be honest, it still does not make any sense to me, but I told myself that I would do it, and once I did that, it was done. But it wasn't as simple as I just made it seem. I had to get a tutor, which was actually my brother right there that's holding the camera. Um, I had to meet my teacher early, early in the morning to retake tests and retake tests and retake tests until I got it right. Um, I had to put everything I cared about on hold, including my clothing brand, which is my heart and soul. And to be completely honest with you guys and honest with myself and be transparent, I was suicidal throughout my entire high school career. Mm, I just didn't see meaning in my existence. I didn't see meaning in myself, so it was hard to wake up for the smile on my face and see meaning in school. But luckily for me, around that time, I found my purpose, which is making people smile, which I have done with you guys since I've been speaking. So, I suppose in a, a crazy way, you guys kept me here on this earth. And so this graduation speech is me returning the favor. And that's all I can do, that's all I can hope for you graduates is that you find your purpose. Uh, more so, find your why. To quote fellow Detroiter Eric Thomas, why you wake up in the morning, why you do what you do, why you can't give up. And when you find your why, every breath you take, every step that you take will be with purpose. You know, I never felt like anything I was doing was wrong. I would be up to 3 a.m. editing these silly videos while a classmate is up to 1 a.m. studying for the ACT. Neither one of us was doing anything that was more important. I was doing something I cared about and they were doing something they cared about. Everyone has a different purpose and I urge you all to find yours. Life is crazy. We create our reality and our future with every single thing that we do today. Our past is a direct, direct reflection of our present and our future comes from our present and things that we do today. Allow yourself to fail. You're gonna fail in everything, it's inevitable. If you wanna be good at something, you have to fail. But don't just fail, fail forward. Learn from your failures and take something from them, you know. Everyone fails. You can do anything you want in this life if you truly, honestly believe that, you know. If you believe it in your heart. A lot of people say they believe things, but they don't. They don't genuinely believe it. I started my clothing brand in seventh grade. The first year I had my clothing brand, I'm like, yeah, you know, this is, I got the dopest, the dopest designs. It's gonna sell off the shelves. I didn't sell anything for a year. But then I sold one shirt, made $3 from it. I was like, bet, I'm about to do it. And I did it, eighth grade year, I made $10,000 a month. Wow, yeah, I know, crazy. <laughs> I blew all that money on candy. They used to have a candy, like a candy shop and lunch, and I'd be like, look, we about to, talking to all my homies, like, we about to do this. We about to get the Reese coats, we about to get the, the hot Cheetos, everything. I came to school one day with a hundred, a hundred ones, and just gave them to the teacher, you know, and just bought everybody something. And then, fresh out of graduation of high school, and I graduated 2016, I moved to California partly from doing these six second videos called Vines. Both of those things that I just said sounds far-fetched, it sounds like something out of a storybook. But I believed in my heart that I could do it and I did it. And none of this is by luck, none of this is by pure chance. Please don't be confused. Um, I made a plan for myself and I stuck to it. And I believed in myself. This is all the fruits of my labor. This is all hard work. Even the things, even this graduation speak is hard, speech is hard work. I was talking to my grandma and she was like, do you, did you ever think that you would have been giving a graduation speech? And without hesitation, I told her yes, because I believe in myself. I didn't know it would come this soon. I didn't know it would be at Etzel 4. I thought it would be at Dearborn High. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. Believe in yourself and your choices and your dreams. People won't believe in you until you make them believe in you. Uh, I want to tell you guys a story. Um, I didn't go to Dearborn High my ninth grade year. I went to Robichaud. And so I came to Dearborn High. To <laughs> <Bulldogs>. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I came to Dearborn High my 10th grade year, and as you guys know, Dearborn is a predominantly Arab community. And so with me being the black child, you know, and within only 20 kids in my class that, that look like me, we, we tended to get grouped together. So there was a fight between three students, only three students. At the end of this story, 20 students got 10 days of suspension. I got suspended for watching the fight, being around the fight. And so when they took me to the office, you know, everyone's coming down on me. Why didn't you stop the fight? You guys have security guards. I have no business doing that. But then they, what really stuck with me that the secretary said is, I don't know what kind of community you come from, where you come from, but we're a community here. And with her saying that, it coincidentally made me feel like I wasn't a part of this community. So then flash forward about five months later, I'm a part of the Young Entrepreneur Academy. You know, these people that said the things about me didn't know anything about my character, didn't know anything, anything about me as a person. They just judged me. And so, bless you. Um, they didn't know anything about me. So I go on to win the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. I placed first place. And, co and it just so happens that I get front page of the De Dearborn Free Press. And they put the Dearborn Free Press in the front office. And they have to announce that I'm the winner over the PA. So then I go into the front office. And she's like, oh my god, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. A Dearborn student, wow. But five months ago, she was telling me she didn't know what kind of community I come from, you know, what kind of person I am. She just didn't take the time to. But that's not her fault. She was naive. She didn't believe in my dreams, but I made her. She didn't believe in who I was, but I made her. And I hope that you guys make people believe in you. Huh. College may not be the choice for you, and that's OK. There's no blueprint to life, even though the idea of college is sold to us this one-way golden ticket to success and security. I remember my senior year, we had a project in one of my classes, and it was about what college we were going to go to and what major we were going to pick. I'm sitting there. I'm looking around, like, who's going to tell her I'm not going to college? I'm sitting there not have taken the ACT. As a senior, I hadn't taken the ACT or the SAT. Hadn't applied to any colleges. And as everyone is around me, it felt like the walls were closing in. This is the first time I began to question if I was doing the right thing, if I was making the right decisions. You know, I began to really think, like, am I doing the wrong thing? But it's, it was kind of too late to back out. But I wasn't. I didn't feel like I was doing the right thing. I, I moved with purpose, and I felt like everything I was doing was the right steps. Doubt can come from anyone. Don't put it past anyone. It can come from your closest friends, from your family, from a stranger. To give an example, I remember my god sister told me, what are you going to do for the rest of your life, make these six-second videos? Well, flash forward to now, these six-second videos got me here. Those six-second videos got me in California. Those six-second videos and the platform that it gave me got me to two million people, allowed me to reach two million people to tell them you know, everything's going to be OK, to be able to tell you guys that everything's going to be OK, be okay and to believe in yourself. So I defend my dreams. And that's the main thing I want you guys to do, is defend your dreams with everything in you, because your dreams are all that you have. Comparison is the thief of joy. I'll say that again so you guys can soak it in. Comparison is the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself and your journey to the journey of others. And it's hard. I know it. It's so hard. We look on Instagram. We're like, oh, he's even looking at me. Meech is 20. He just graduated. He lives in California. He has a BMW. Doing all these things. It's hard to not glamorize and often put ourselves down by looking at the next person. It's a trap. It's easy to look at everyone and believe that they have it all figured out. But we don't. You can look at me and feel like I figured it out. You can look at these celebrities and feel like they have it figured out. But we all wake up every day like, what am I going to do? And I wake up every day not knowing what I'm going to do. You have to change the way that you think and live in order to be happy. You can't go outside of yourself to seek validation. You have to take that and put it within. 
You have to be happy. You have to make yourself happy. You have to believe in the steps that you are taking. Validate, validate your own success and don't look for it within other people. You can never let yourself down if you always do your best. <laughs> always do your best. Now I want to take the time to talk about support. Um, I hope all of you have at least one person in your life that has acted as your legs when you felt like you can no longer walk. Someone who has invested as much time, energy, and love into you as they would invest into themselves. Which makes me think about teachers, you know, because we, we tend to think teachers are servants. Teachers are in debt to us. This is our job. This, this is their job, we tend to think, you know. They signed up for this. There's teachers who don't go home until late night not seeing their children because of us. Because they believe in us. We're their children more so. And we don't show them any gratitude. We don't express our love for them, the things that they do for us. So today, after this graduation, I want you to go up to any teacher, any mentor that has helped you, and tell them you love them. Love. Don't say, you know, I appreciate you. Tell them you love them. Thank you. Because they didn't have to do what they do. They didn't have to go above their call of duty for you guys. But they did because they care about you. My mom right here is in the middle of the stage. Look at her. She, oh, you know, it's me. What can I say? That's my baby. Um, I want to talk about mama for a second, if y'all mind. Um, my entire support system is my mother. Everything I do is for my mom. You know, if I told her I was depressed, she would sit and talk to me and let me talk and listen. If I told her I was suicidal, she would sit and let me cry on her lap and take me to go get some food, watch a movie, anything to make me feel better. If I told her I didn't feel good and I didn't feel like getting out of bed in the morning because, you know, me, with me being depressed, she would call the school like, yeah, hello, Demetrius Harmon's not coming in school today. <laughs> and just how m much she was there for me and without invalidating how I felt, without invalidating the things I was going through, whether she understood it or not, kept me here today. I'm alive because of my mother. I firmly believe I would have ended my life if it wasn't for her. So today I don't just live from, I'm not just alive for my mother, but I live for my mother. I want to talk to the parents. Parents, support your children in whatever they want to do, not just what you envision for them. You know, a lot of parents have their children, and before they can even talk, they're like, yeah, that's going to be, he's going to be a doctor. And they don't care to listen to whatever that child wants to do. Support your children in what they want to do, or they'll hate you. Simple as that. Um, Angelo, my best friend. Can you stand up for a second? Can everybody give me a round of applause for my best friend? Wait, stand up again. Hold up. As y'all can see, he has my hoodie on. This is the support I'm talking about. It's hot, and he has my clothing brand on. <laughs> um, I met Angelo in eighth grade, and at first I didn't like Angelo. I didn't. I hated him. I was really insecure and just not who I just not who I am now when I met Angelo and a lot of things I wanted to possess myself Angelo possessed you know he was confident in himself carefree all the girls wanted him I, I wanted all of these things and so in turn with me hating myself I put that on him and hated him but then when we got past that you know we would ride our bikes every weekend because his dad lives around the corner and those times meant more to me than I can, I can think Angelo would imagine. You know, it, it saved me from being in my room in a dark space, thinking these dark thoughts. We didn't even talk about these things. I didn't tell Angelo I was suicidal until around 11th grade. But just being able to be alone with someone and know that if I needed him, he was there, meant the world to me. Now Angelo is my roommate in California. 
Support is everything. Um, Oh, Angela, I love you. <laughs> I have this friend named Dante. We graduated together in, from Dearborn. He, was, he goes off to college, and one day he just randomly texts me. He's like, you know, we're taking a psychology class. I'm like, okay, all right, I don't know what you want me to say to that. So I, I just give him a vague response, and he's like, you know, we're, we're learning about depression and mental health. I'm like, all right. He's like, no, I'm serious. I, I, I want to help you. I really, I really care. And to feel like someone cares to that degree where they're, they, just, they just think of me. You know, he's taking an entire course just to learn how to help me with the things that I'm going through meant the world to me. Um, my three brothers, one of them isn't here. I have... Dion, Deontay, and DeAndre. I used to not have friends growing up. You know, I was the nerdy kid that read manga, watched Naruto, drew in journals. So I didn't have much friends. But my mom always told us that if we had anyone, we had to have each other. And we took that to heart, you know. That's the one constant thing in my life, the most constant thing. If I don't have anyone, I know I got my brothers. My dad isn't here, but I want to talk about my dad. My dad treats me like his treasure. You know, every time he looks at me, I just see him. Like, I, I, I see how proud he is in his eyes. My dad worked, worked, and worked, and worked, and is probably at work right now for everything that I have. You know, so I work for my father. I work to retire my father. And these are the things that are important to me. That's why I'm spending so long to talk about support. So tell your support system today that you love them. <laughs> I must be saying something right. Y'all clapping a lot. Um, now, <laughs> now what? I'm sure you all have a sense of excitement for the future as well as a sense of hopelessness. It's inevitable. There's a life to be lived, and I can't wait to see what you all do with it. I hope you learn to do the things that fill your heart with glee. I hope you learn to live your life untethered. I hope you learn to cherish your friendships and the times you all spend together. But above all else, I hope you all choose to walk a path that makes you happy. Not your friends, not your family, but you. Because at the end of the day, you have to live with the life you choose. And if you have any goals, I hope the goal is happiness, because that's all that matters. You are all that matters. Thank you. Thank you, Demetrius. You're welcome here. Thank you. Thank you, Demetrius. You're welcome at Ed's Florida anytime.